How's it going, people? Well, getting a little more DNC out of the way. We are up to section 56. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet at Kirtland, Ohio, June 1831. But we're not sure what day that was. Hang on. While my mug is still frosty. Mmm. Mm. Pure delight. Okay, now we can proceed. Elder Ezra Thayer who had been appointed to travel in the ministry with Elder Thomas B. March, was unable, was unable to start on his mission when the latter was ready. You guys should have seen that come and be in province. Uh, and the Lord answered the prophet's inquiry on the matter by giving this revelation. The Lord may and does revoke as well as command, especially when you fuck up. You can just say, oh yeah, well God wanted you to have it so he could take it away later because you were going to mess up. And he knew that too. <laughs> I think I'm starting to understand. I don't chime in. Let me know. All right. Ezra there rebuked for pride and selfishness. Uh, hmm. uh, Selah J. Griffin appointed in his place, which was probably the original plan all along, but they had to do it this way because God's ways are mysterious. It's all part of the plan. It just doesn't seem to make sense, but it actually does. If you don't think about it much. All right. Yeah, they pointed in his place to travel with Thomas B. Marsh. Offenders rep re reproved. Uh, both rich and poor. They don't give a fuck, man. They're going to call you out. Uh, necessity of repentance as expressed by the broken heart and contrite spirit. <sighs> mm. One. Hearken, O ye people who profess my name, saith the Lord your God. For behold, mine anger is kindled against the rebellious. They piss him off big time. And they shall know mine arm and mine indignation in the day of visitation and of the wrath upon the nations when he layeth the smack down. The smacketh, downeth. Gotta make this sound right. Two. And he, and he that will not take up his cross and follow me and keep my commandments, the same shall not be saved. Yeah, well, if your Savior jumped off a bridge, would you? Hmm? Just think if they had a stone Jesus instead of... People would be, you know, big old rock around their neck. And they wouldn't be able to swim or anything. <laughs> or maybe tiny electric chairs. I guess these days it'd be like a little... Uh, they'd have tubing around their neck and then a needle. 
Yeah. Yeah, cross is a lot easier. Two, two sticks of wood, you're done. All right. And, yeah, follow me and keep my commandments. The same shall not be saved. For, behold, I, the Lord, command. And he that will not obey shall be cut off in mine own due time. And after I have commanded, and the commandment is broken, for, wherefore, I, the Lord, command and revoke, as it seemeth me good. What the hell? I mean, it's his board game. He can, I mean, if he took the ball and went home, you know, it really would be end of game, wouldn't it? It seemeth me good. And all this to be answered upon the heads of the rebellious, saith the Lord. Five. Wherefore I revoke the commandment which was given unto my servants Thomas B. March and Ezra Thayer. It's a do over. Shake the etch a sketch. <laughs> And draw a new picture. Looks like it was never there before, that other one. Yeah. See, God planned it one way because he knew it was going to end out a different way. And it's the whole journey that matters. <sighs> and give a new commandment unto my servant, Thomas. <coughs> that he shall take up his journey speedily to the land of Missouri and my servant Sela J. Griffin shall also go with him. Six. For behold, I revoke the commandment which was given unto my servants Sela J. Griffin and Newell Knight in consequence of the stiff nakedness of my people, can't even control his own people. <sighs> Which are in Thompson and their rebellions. Wait, my people? Which are in Thompson? Thompson isn't a name. Um, and their rebellions. Seven. Wherefore, let my servant Newell Knight remain with them, and as many as will go, may go, that are contrite before me, and be led by him to the land which I have appointed. Eight. And again, verily, I say unto you that my servant Ezra there must repent of his pride and his selfishness and obey the former commandment which I have given him concerning the place upon which he lives. He doesn't want to move, huh? Is that it? Nine. And if he will do this, as there shall be no divisions made upon the land, he shall be appointed still to go to the land of Missouri. Otherwise, he shall receive the money which he was paid, and shall leave the place, and shall be cut off of my church. Saith the Lord God of hosts, 
That's many. <sighs> Eleven. And though the heaven and earth pass away, because they might, these words shall not pass away. Oh, they'll outlast the earth, huh? I guess if you fire them in space. <laughs> but shall be fulfilled. Okay, so they better get fulfilled then. And it's got a tall order here. Twelve. And if my servant Joseph Smith Jr. must needs pay the money, behold, I, the Lord, will pay it upon him again in the land of Missouri. And those of whom he shall receive may be rewarded again according to that which they do. So it's about works again, which it should be anyway. Thirteen. For according to that which they do, they shall receive, even in lands, for their inheritance. 14. Behold, thus saith the Lord unto my people, You have many things to do and to repent of, for behold, your sins have come up unto me in the cloud kingdom. <sighs> and are not pardoned. Because you seek to counsel in your own ways. You haven't groveled once. Too much pride. It's hard to grovel with a stiff neck. Fifteen, and your hearts are not satisfied, and ye obey not the truth, since they've hijacked that word <laughs> and made it mean something it ain't. It ain't true, their truth. <sighs> but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Uh. Wouldn't it be so simple if that were just the case? But actually, some people don't buy into this shit because it don't make sense. Not because they want to be bad or naughty. They might even be kind people. Yeah, I think I'm pretty decent. All right. Yeah. Uh, take up his journey speedily to the land of Missouri and may call my servant Sela J. Griffin. And my servant, Sela J. Griffin, shall also go with him. <sighs> this can't be right. I'm in the wrong place. Sixteen. Woe unto you rich men. You mean like what? Mitt? That will not give your substance to the poor, for your riches will canker your souls, and this shall be your lamentation in the day of visitation and judgment. Well, what if you built a bunch of staples? Doesn't that count? <laughs> you know, hey, great place to get stationary, you know, staples. <laughs> yeah, that was a big help. Thank you. And that Olympics thing. And this shall uh, judgment uh, and of indignation. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and my soul is not saved. Count. Seventeen. Woe unto you, poor men, whose hearts are not broken, whose spirits are not contrite. Just haven't been punked out enough yet. Yeah. And whose bellies are not satisfied. 
And those hands are not stayed from laying hold upon other men's goods. So you poor thieves, because all poor people are thieves, all of them, right? I mean, I don't think so, but I don't know. I mean, this is pretty authoritative here. Whose eyes are full of greediness, and who will not labor with your own hands? I'm sure, he doesn't mean all poor people. Eighteen. But blessed are the poor who are pure in heart, whose hearts are broken, and whose spirits are contrite. For they shall see the kingdom of God coming in power and great glory unto their deliverance. For the fatness of the earth shall be theirs. Big harvest, but nothing to do with fertility, cults and all that. It just replaced them. <laughs> Made them all buttoned up and uptight. Yeah. Uh, 19. For behold, the Lord shall come, and his recompense shall be with him, and he shall reward every man, and the poor shall rejoice if they're not thieves, or if they repented right after doing their last thievery and then croaked. That would do. Uh, 20. And their generation shall inherit the earth from generation to generation. They're not going to get their own planet or solar system necessarily, you know, but we'll give them this cast off maybe. Uh, from generation to generation, forever and ever. And now I make an end of speaking unto you, even so. Amen. And that's 56. And that's about all I can stand for one sitting. Ah, let me know if you learned something. Um, seems the message of this is that when he fucked up, he didn't really fuck up because he's God. And even though things didn't go as he said they were supposed to go, yeah, he was actually kind of, you know, doing a kind of like playing possum, you know. It was just... I don't know. I guess he was teaching us a lesson somehow. <laughs> because he has a right to revoke shit at his pleasure, you know, and change his mind and redo and forget a covenant or cancel a covenant and come up with another one. And he needs his word rewritten all the time by all these prophets or profiteers. So that's about all I learned from this chapter is... Uh, <laughs> Things weren't going out as as prophesied. So, stay tuned. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. And chewing right through it.